These are Michael Powell's home movies that he took during a trek in Scotland, probably about 10 years after the making of I Know Where I'm Going. He loved going to Scotland to sort of clear his mind out after he had finished directing a film. The stack that you see here, these uh, formations are very much uh, admired by rock climbers, and they, they often climb them. They're very dangerous. Many people have died falling off them. For an Englishman, Michael had an extraordinary love of Scotland. The Scotsmen have told me that Michael probably knew Scotland better than many Scotsmen. Any moment that he could get away, he loved to head north. He said that he had a compass in his head which faced north. That's where he wanted to be when he needed to restore his spirits. These are the two of his companions who were often on the hill with him, Alistair Dunnett on the left and Bill Payton, Michael's personal assistant for 30 years, on the right, both Scotsmen. One of Bill Payton's most important jobs was to keep a rucksack packed, uh, filled with chocolate and whiskey, so that as soon as Michael finished shooting, he and Bill would take a train and head immediately north to Scotland. They would call Alistair Dunnett, who was the editor of The Scotsman, and also Seton Gordon, a wonderful naturalist who had written extensively about Scotland, and they would agree to meet somewhere, and they would just strike off, walking towards their goal. In this case, the goal was a hill called Benmore Coigach, which was in Wester Ross, an area that Michael particularly loved and knew intimately. These two men are very typical of what are called highland stalkers, men who live on the hill, either protecting the sheep or leading parties uh, who are hunting deer. And obviously one of the party is now taking a rare photograph of Michael in his own home movies, because since he takes them all the time, you hardly ever see him. This is Bill Payton, a Shetlander who he met on the edge of the world. And this is Seton Gordon, uh, the great naturalist, whose books first got Michael interested in Scotland and actually got him interested in making Edge of the World. This is Michael's dog Sweep, about whom we will hear later. And this is Alistair Dunnett, the editor of The Scotsman. I think they're all feeling pretty fine. Perhaps I've had a few whiskeys. Michael always said whiskey tasted the best on the hill. These beautiful atmospheric shots of Scotland are, are very reminiscent of what you see in I Know Where I'm Going. Of course, they are in black and white there. But Michael captured as often as he could the feeling of being on the hill in that film. This is a cairn, a stack of stones, which I think were sometimes burial sites and often just markers. The party has not gotten to the top of Benmore Coigach yet. They're, they're just part of the way up. Alistair Dunnett, by the way, gave a eulogy at uh, Michael Powell's memorial service. Martin Scorsese was the other who spoke. And Alistair spoke at the end of uh, his speech about putting a stone on the top of the cairn of a beloved friend. It was a very moving speech. Uh, I'll never forget it. As you can tell from these home movies, these walks were rather arduous. And Michael always told me a wonderful story about his dog, Sweep, the dog we just saw before, who um, went on one of these long walks with him. I'd like to read it, uh, a section from his autobiography. We must sorely try the patience of our animal friends. On one of the walks I took with Seton Gordon, he was anxious to show me his part of the islands and arranged to take me up Glen Tilt and down the other side into the forest of Bremar. It was a longish walk, 22 miles, and I had always wanted to do it. Alistair and Bill came, and there were one or two others, but the one I remember most is Sweep. I had forgotten that Seton and I had taken a car up to the glen where the road ends and had then completed the walk on foot. It added about six miles to the tramp. By the time we got to the watershed, we had all had enough, and there were still ten miles to go. Suddenly, Sweep stood there in the middle of the track and gave out his opinion of what lousy planners we were, how nobody but an idiot would bring a little dog to such a spot in the Cairngorms with night falling, and he, Sweep, would like to bite all the people concerned. Bow, wow, wow. We all stood there transfixed while he barked and yelled his opinion. A dog of character, a dog with his own opinions, a dog from whom to learn. This is Sweep, 
leading Seton Gordon up the hill. I'd like to read you something Michael wrote about Seton Gordon in his book. Seton was to remain one of my best friends for many years. I suppose he was about 20 years older than me and was very tall and stately. He wore the kilt, and it suited him. No other Highlander that I knew could wear it so well, and he was never without his shooting glass, his camera, and his long walking stick, whose length was just the height of his shoulder, as it should be. Nothing that moved on the hill escaped his attention. To walk with him or climb with him or to stalk with him was an education. Every sight and sound was interpreted by him immediately. He would scan the heather-covered slopes all around, and of course everything that moved stopped. Now that he is gone, I feel when I am on the hills, deaf, dumb, and blind. He was a great judge of piping and was often in demand at Highland Games. He was a good piper himself, and it was a sight to see him walking up and down with his long stride as he played a pibrach. For a nature lover and judge of piping, Seton was surprisingly hard of hearing and was rather deaf to ordinary conversation. And I can see his gentle, inquiring face with his hand cupped around his ear as he listened to what you are saying. Perhaps his hardness of hearing for ordinary conversation was mainly diplomatic. This is Bill Payton cooling off after the hot day. Michael wrote about Bill. A personal assistant who has no loyalty to anybody else but you can save a film director hours of time and worry, besides saving him from a breakdown or from going mad. On the pictures we were making, where every decision, however large, however small, would be made by Emmerich and me, and eventually by me alone, a man like Bill was beyond price. I was very fortunate in my friends. We were continually to be found, singly or together, by motor bus, by train, by light aircraft, and on our flat feet, gathering to walk the hills of Scotland.